everybody. Welcome to another episode of Master the NEC, where we talk about the National Electrical Code and all things electrically related. My name is Paul Abernathy, and I am your host for today's lesson. Today's lesson is going to be a fun one because it is something that ex is experienced on a lot of exams, and it causes people a lot of heartache, and it really shouldn't. It's a simple calculation, um, and it's a range calculation or dryer calculation. And what it talks about is anytime that I'm dealing with single phase ranges, that are used in dwelling units that are in buildings that are supplied by a three-phase four-wire system, you've got to do a little bit of a calculation. And especially if the exam asks you for the demand for ranges, and if it only asks you that, then it's, it's pretty simple and straightforward. If it's a total load calculation for an entire structure, it can be a little more complicated because if I'm doing a standard calculation, I get to use table 220.55 and I get some demands there. If I'm doing an optional method, then I take the nameplate rating of a range or a dryer and I apply that and I get demand values that are based on that optional method. So standard method has a bunch of different demands that you can apply. An optional method really pulls the values from a nameplate and uses the actual demands that are in the optional method. So it's kind of one of those things that if I'm doing an entire calculation, I need to know whether it's a standard or optional method being used. But however, on many exams, all they're asking is for a drier demand load calculation. So I thought today we would try to do a quick lesson and show you how to do that. And there's a certain paragraph that's in 220.55 for ranges as well as in 220.54 for dryers that seems to freak people out. At least they go to do an exam and it, all of a sudden they don't pay attention to the fact that it says 120.208 and it's a three-phase four-wire, but they calculate it like they would for a single-phase 120.240, and they get, get it wrong, and, and I hate people to get that wrong. So today's lesson, we're going to do that, and we're going to show you how to calculate it out if you have single-phase ranges connected to a three-phase four-wire feeder or service application. All right, so now let's look at the code and first understand what 220.55 is. Now, I guess I should say before I do this, let's put the brakes real quick. On an exam, typically you're going to use the standard method unless they specifically tell you to use the optional. Okay, it wouldn't be fair because I could use either in the code. So they're typically going to tell you which you can use. Um, and remember, we typically use 220.55, that's that infamous range calculations and all. We typically use that when we're doing standard methods. In the optional method, we don't. We actually take the nameplate value of the range and we do it that way. Uh, now, in the individual dwelling units, I can calculate those out using the standard method. I can calculate those out using an optional method. We have a bunch of different ways to do this, but mainly on an exam, they're not going to ask you for all these layers. So they're going to probably want to know what the demand factor is for a certain number of ranges. All right. And in most cases, and I can tell you in the Texas exam, uh, they're going to give you multiple floors, 20, 20 unit apartment complex, let's say, and each one has a 12 kW range. And so we're going to work that kind of equation out. So you kind of, I really want you to understand the, the concepts of the formula, and it's pretty simple. Um, but I really want to work it from that angle so that you have a, that way you have a good grasp of it. Um, at this point, it's also good to remind you that we do have an extensive video on ranges. So I really want to make sure you understand all of the range calculations uh, as well, because that's low hanging fruit on an exam, making sure you understand that one range at 12 kW is really 8 kW on the table. OK, so it's important that you understand all those concepts. Go and watch that uh, range video that I have on our website here at this YouTube.com, Master of the NEC, you can watch that video and get some knowledge. All right, so let's look at the code. So here's what the code says. We all know that this is the normal language of the code, talking about using, it's permitted to use this table. And I say permitted, you could actually take it always at nameplate if you want. And that means you're just going to be oversizing everything. This is a permissive. It allows you to be able to use this table. Here, it says you shall be permitted to use this table. Again, it only applies that are in excess of one and three quarter KW. If it's less than one and three quarter, you got to take it at its full value. But you can use this table if it's in excess of one and three quarter. And you'll notice down here that different things that's, that, that give you the different applications and how you apply demand factors, okay? All right. So let's kind of, we don't need to work on this table. We'll assume you know how to work this table and we won't go here yet. 
Here's the sentence that we're worried about right here. It says, where two or more single-phase ranges are supplied by a three-phase four-wire feeder or service, the total load shall be calculated on the basis of the twice the maximum number connected between any two phases. What in the world are they talking about? Don't worry. I put together a graphic that explains this. So let's do that real quick. Here's the graphic. Now, I've got 20 ranges, okay? And they're all 12 kW. And this in the red is the sentence that we're mainly focusing on now, okay? So we have 20 units, that's a given. Now, what we're trying to find is first, what is the maximum number of ranges that can be connected between any two phases? So we have an A phase, B phase, C phase on a 12208. So you'll have an A to B, B to C, uh, in, in A to C. You have all this configuration of potential in the entire building of how these connections could be made, right? So you got to come up with what would be the maximum possible number uh, between any two phases of ranges. So here's how you do it. So you have 20 ranges, and we know we're dealing with a three-phase supply, because that's what this is, a 12208 three-phase supplying single-phase ranges. Right now, we're working on each phase. There's three phases, okay? Three. Now, 20 divided by three. That's going to come out to 6.6666667. And remember, it's 0.6. So you can't have 0.6 of a range, right? So we're rounding it to seven. So that's where we come up with a maximum number of seven between any two phases. It's the maximum number we potentially could get between any two phases. Don't let your mind wander. Stick with me. Seven is the maximum number, okay? Now, in this potential, you're also looking at it and saying, okay, what did the code say? You take that maximum number and it do, do it twice the maximum number. So we took that seven times two, twice. That gives me 14 ranges. Now, here's where you get to breathe out. The hard part's done. You found out what the maximum number was, relax. It's just an equation you had to do. You had to take the total number divided by three to find out what it is per phase. And then that, and then that gives you the maximum number. And then you do that times two, and so the total actual number of ranges is 14 now. Yes, I know there's 12 units. Yes, I know there's 12 ranges. Ignore it. This is the number you're working with now. Just trust me, okay? I could do an example and show you the breakdown of the buses and how it works out. Let's not have to go there. This is the equation. This is how you do it. You've got 14 ranges now. Now, once you know the number of ranges, now you go to table 220.55 and treat it like you would anything else. All right, now, since these are 12 kW, we'll go back to the code and we'll look at it. So here's the code. And we'll go down here to 12, right here. And we follow it over. And since they all are higher than 8 and 3 quarter, we're automatically going to always default to column C. Okay, that's always first. Now, note 3 allows us to to not have to go into column three, but if y'all all probably know, note three is only dealing with the ones that are over one and three quarter through eight and three quarter. Uh, and then I can use these columns in lieu of column C. However, in this case, they're 12 kW, so I'm firmly in column C. So I'm down here, remember it was 14, that's what our equation did. So now we're at 29. Now remember, this is 29 kW. This is not 29%, okay? These two columns here, deal in percentages. This column deals in KW. I, I could, if I had a dollar for everybody that got that wrong, I would do a video on how I made my first million dollars, okay? So look, don't do that, all right? Understand this table. Now, let's go back to the presentation. So here we are, and we know that it's 29 KW. Well, I always want to start breaking down KWs into VA for my calculations. Now, as you see at the top there, KW is synonymous with KVA, okay? The K just stands for 1,000, so 1,000 watts is 1 KW. 1,000 VA is 1 KVA. You with me? You follow how that works? But they're equivalent, okay? They can be interchanged, and it doesn't matter in these equations like this. So in this case, one of your questions on your exam, might it might be simply, what is the KW, what is the demand for 
and gives you the for 20 uh, 12 kW ranges in a three phase four wire and tells you it's 122.8. Well, the total demand is 29 kW. That is the demand. But in many cases, they want you to break it out even further. For example, they might want to know what your value is per phase. Well, since we're dealing with a single phase range and it's using only two phases, that's what we're working with. So we want to find out first, what is the actual demand per phase? So since we broke it down to 29 kW, we divide that by two, and that is 14,500 VA per phase for a total of 29,000 VA. So that would be a question on an exam if it wanted to know what it was per phase. Just break it down a little further. Now, if you're doing a calculation that wants to know what the overall service load is or your feeder load is, and it's a three phase for the whole building, like say a, uh, you're doing something for service calculating the entire building, then you need to do what's called the equivalent back to three phase because this was just dealing with your single per phase application. Pretty simple. Since this is per phase, and since now we're going back to calculating the actual load of the building, then we just simply take, we know we have three phases. And again, we're sharing all three phases all the way down through these 20 different units. So you take the 14,500 VA per phase and you do it times three because it's three phases, an A, B, and a C. So that's where you get the 43,500 VA. And that's what you're gonna to apply to your three phase calculation. So you take whatever other loads you calculated using the standard method, okay, small appliances, lighting, general lighting, or whatever, and now you're going to add your range calculation to that, and it would be 43,500 VA. Now, again, if it's three phase, you're gonna take that total VA amount, and if it's a 208 system, then you're gonna go 208 times 1.732, which is 360. So then you're gonna just simply take the total VA divided by 360, and that's what your actual amps are gonna be. And that's how you size a service. Um, also, you can see an example of this back in the informative Annex D, and that is D5A, I believe, that pretty much walks you through this. So I'll show you that in your code book so you know where to go. If you're getting a pinch on an exam, and you want to know where to go, let's do this. I'll go back to the top, and I happen to have a bookmark that will take me to the ranges, uh, to the annexes, and I will scroll down until we get to it, and we'll show you an example where it kind of does the exact same thing that we just, just worked out, all right? So let's move it on down here. Bear with me because I, I got to make sure I'm at the right one. Okay, so here we go. Multifamily 208-120, that's our example. So we move down and we wanna to go to the example with 20 ranges. So here's 40 units, doesn't really matter for our example. We're really concerned with the 20 ranges. So first thing we had to do is just like it says in the code book, we had to find the maximum number. How do you think we came up with that seven? Again, it's 20 divided by three, which is 6.666666, the 0.6 is a major portion, so we round it to seven. You can't have 0.6 of a range, okay? It's impossible. So you round it to seven. Then it says twice the maximum number between any two phases. So it was two times that maximum number, which is seven. That's how we got that 14. So that's where you saw that we went to table 220.55, and that's where that 29,000 came from. And then you see where it says we wanna find out what it is per phase, and again, these are single phase ranges. So we only have two phases we're dealing with. So it's 29,000 divided by two, 14,500. Now, what is the equivalent for the three phase? Because now that was simply to find the demand for the ranges per phase. Now we have to go back and solve our calculation, right? And so then we take that, we'd simply take the per phase and you multiply it by three. And that's where you get the 43,500. So that is our three phase equivalent for all of those single phase range, ranges connected to our three phase four wire system. So when you're doing your calculation to determine what the ampacity of the building now, here you see an example 69,150. That was based on the other loads in the building. And now we just simply plug in our range load and that came up to 112,650 for this example in the back of the code book. Now with that calculation, uh, again at that point, you simply have to do the three phase, which again I told you was 208 
and you multiply it by 1.732, which would be 360. And so it's 112,650 VA divided by 360 is 313 amps. Now let's check that and see if that works. So I've got my calculator and just, just check their math, right? We always want to check their math. So first thing I do is 208 and I'm going to do that times 1.732. And again, that's our 360. We know we're good there. We should always kind of remember 360 and things like 831 if it's 480, but you get it. All right. So now let's do it this way. And so we had 112,650, as you see on the screen, and we're dividing that by 360. Again, 112.9, uh, which rounds to 313. Math can't lie. So there you go. So that's how we do it. All right. Pretty simple. And I just wanted to make sure that the folks knew how to calculate out anytime you're dealing with it. Again, if you want to find out the values per phase, that's how you do it. You want to find out once you find it out per phase. Now, if you got to leave that and you got to start working with the calculation for the service or feeder calculation and you need to convert it back to the three phase VA value, then you're simply multiplying it by three, the per phase value by three. That gives you the bigger picture for the three phase because you have that load potential on every phase, okay? So that's how you do that calculation. So hopefully you got something out of that. It's pretty simple concept to do, um, but just remember to follow the steps. You gotta find out what the maximum number is. Just taste the total number divided by three because it's three legs. That's gonna give you a value. And then the code says you take that value times two. That's gonna tell you the number that you work with in the table in 220.55 and then you just work it from there and and I showed you how to break it down per phase and how to do the equivalent in three phase if you get lost it's also in the back of the book in the informative annex D so you go in there and highlight it make a little note next to 220.55 if you're allowed to write in your code book that says see example on you know informative annex and D5A and then go in there and highlight it that'll help you out okay Hopefully you got something out of this short lesson. Till next time, folks, stay safe and God bless.